So I had two parents that were addicts. It was hard. But when I got saved, I think God just like downloaded in me so much compassion that I think can only be equated to the heart of God. A lot of times the enemy works in generational curses. I think for some people, they can be affected by that trauma. And unfortunately, the victims become victimizers. God is not the one who is tempting you. Yeah. God is not the one that's dangling it in front of your face. God is always going to give you a way out. What is up, happy and healthy, and welcome back to The Pod. It's your girl, Janine Amapola Ward, and I hope you guys are having a good day. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. This is a Christian podcast where we talk about a lot of different things here, dating, sin, struggles, waiting, uh, decision-making, marriage. I mean, we talk a lot about stuff, fitness, health, and my husband comes and joins me here quite a bit, and I am really excited about today's topic because I am bringing on a guest, Kirby Kelly. So we are going to be talking about a topic that I think is pretty difficult. Um, we do talk about pornography. We do talk about masturbation, but we talk about sin. We talk about struggles. We talk about addictions. We talk about finding freedom from habitual sin and patterns and things that perhaps you just feel like, I could never get out of this. And so this is a big part of my story. I think it's something that can be applied to almost anything in your life, whether it is, you know, alcoholism or um, honestly anything else, like really you name what that habitual thing is for you. I want you to find freedom. That is the goal of this podcast. Above all else is for you to live a life that reflects Christ and you know Christ more. And then in turn, you help others know Christ. And so sometimes these, these sins and these struggles, they pull us away from knowing God and they isolate us. They cause us to, um, be ineffective in our faith because we just feel like we can't be free. And based off of Kirby's book, which I'm really excited, I'm excited to have her on. She wrote this book called you can be free. And I think it's really genuinely going to help you. So I pray this conversation blesses you. She is an author. She's a speaker. She's a Bible teacher. She's just one of my good friends here as well in Dallas and someone that I genuinely back up and believe in. And so I think this episode is going to bless you. If it does, please share it with a friend or maybe re-listen to it if it's something you need to listen to multiple times. And I genuinely pray that you feel God's presence in today's episode. So I love you guys. Let's just get right into today's episode. Okay, Kirby Kelly, welcome back to welcome back to Happy and Healthy. Uh, Kirby was on the podcast, I think back in 2021. Something like that. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Okay, so this is actually really funny. I was on her podcast for my book mm -hmm. and you unlocked a memory for me where you said that you came over right after I got out of a relationship. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was sad girl summer. <laughs> and then here we are two, two years later, you know, we're both married, which is so crazy. And so it is an honor to have you back on the podcast. Girl, it's good to be back and meet your husband. I know. And to be in the new podcast setup. It's so cute. I love it. Yeah. The last one was in the other room and it mm -hmm. was like closet vibes, <laughs> which well, I didn't hate it. Uh, do, but you, do you remember we were having like so many technical issues and we were literally oh. talking about like spiritual warfare and all this stuff? Do you I'm I'm not that? surprised. <laughs> Every single time I talk about that, the, the enemy is like, yeah, not today. You're not going right. to. He's like, I'm going to just boop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I'm really excited to have you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce like kind of who you are, what you do, and obviously you wrote a book. I did. So show that in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, so for y'all who don't know me, hi, hello. My name's Kirby Kelly, uh, and I am now an author, which is crazy. Wait, that deserves a sound effect. <gasps> <gasps> Round of applause for Kirby. <laughs> Not the soundboard. It's I, my favorite. I literally have the same soundboard as you. I need to do that. I'm obsessed with the sound effects. It's kind of cheesy, but I love it. It's iconic though. <laughs> yeah, it is. I love it. Well, yeah, now I'm part of the book club, which is awesome. The mm -hmm. author club. Uh, but yeah, I create content online. So like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. And then I do a lot of speaking and preaching. I'm just really passionate about people knowing Jesus, walking out freedom and knowing more about him truly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just use my platforms to do that. And she's amazing at it. You guys, she has a podcast as well called bought and beloved. Mm -hmm. And 
The thing I really appreciate about you is you give like sound biblical teaching. It's Thank not you. just like some fluffy like um God wants you to be happy or holy, not happy. Not like those like yeah. those like cliche it's just, phrases. It's just the sound bite. I'm like Yeah, no. Like let's go deep. You actually go deep into scripture. You know your scripture. You've read commentaries. You are in seminary. You went to seminary. Are you still in seminary? No, I graduated last year. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Okay. So she graduated seminary and it's just an honor to have you on. So we do go way back. We Me met too. back in 2020. And so it's just really cool watching our evolution of just our platforms and marriage. And I know yeah. you've been through some tough stuff Girl. in your life and yeah. you know, I'll let you share more of yeah. your story, but she did write a book called you can be free. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that today. It says overcoming temptation and habitual sin by the power and promises of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about this topic today because I know that there's many people that DM me and they're like, Janine, why can't I be free? Why can I not get out of this addiction? This, mm -hmm you know, habitual thing that I keep falling back into over and over and over. And I can say that was part of my story and that's part of Kirby's story as yep. well. So we're going to get into that topic today and I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. Shout out to Claritin for supporting this episode and providing us with samples. So if you guys are like me and when allergy season comes around, it is your worst nightmare. My nose is itchy. My throat is itchy. My eyes cannot stop watering. It is literally the worst. But luckily for those of us who live with the symptoms of allergies, we can live Claritin Clear with Claritin D. It's amazing and designed for serious allergy sufferers. Claritin D has two powerful ingredients in just one pill that relieves your allergy symptoms and decongests your nose so you can breathe better. This double action combination of prescription strength allergy medicine and the best decongestant available relieves sneezing, a runny nose, itchy and watery eyes, and itchy nose and throat and sinus congestion and pressures with ease. So if you guys are ready to live life as if you don't have allergies it's time to live claritin clear trust me you guys i take it and i can just have a way better day i can breathe better seriously it's amazing and it's fast and powerful relief as for claritin d at your local pharmacy counter you don't even need a prescription go to claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live claritin clear use as directed Okay, Kirby, let's just get into it. Let's do it. What is your story of like why you wrote this book? Like, I know I read the book. I read mm -hmm. about five chapters in so far, but I don't want to give it away too much. So yeah. why, why did you write this book? Yeah, so the reason why I wrote this book, number one, God called me to do it. Uh, I feel like the popular thing kind of like in the Christian circles is like you build your platform, you start your podcast, and then you write your book. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's like if God calls you to do it, then do it. But I, I really felt like very early on when I started ministry, like with all my platforms, that I knew eventually I would write a book, but I wanted to wait for the right message and the right season and to have peace in that. And so when it came to this specific book, You Can Be Free in the topic, I remember it, it was just person after person, like people I didn't even know were coming up to me in church, were coming up to me literally just random people in random places saying God's telling you that you need to start writing wow. like you need to start writing your book and I was like oh dang like if everyone here is telling me this and I have this conviction like now's the season I need to start doing it and it was really cool just because I started doing that and was very prayerful in it and I mean if God calls you to do anything he's going to be the one to open the doors mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened it was just so effortless with door after door opening getting connected with the people that published the book and all that. But this specific topic, you can be free, like freedom from sin, freedom from shame, freedom from lies that we're believing. This is something that is so near and dear to my mm. heart. I mean, I lead with my story in it. But similarly, I get so many messages from people just saying, I'm stuck struggling with the same thing and I can't break free. Is something wrong with me? Does God love me? Am I going to lose my salvation? It just, it spirals like sin spirals into shame, which spirals into anxiety, which spirals into doubt, which spirals into depression. It just like, it's this endless spiral. Mm. And it's like, friend, God created us to live in freedom and abundance with him. And we have full access to that through Jesus because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I need this first and foremost. And so knowing that this was the message that God put on my heart and that he walked and delivered me through and, and just one of the biggest requests that I get with messages as well, I knew I wanted to write on this specific 
thing. And I blinked and now the book is here, it feels like, wow. which is crazy. It's a good book, you guys. I was reading it on the plane ride back from Miami and her and I actually have a pretty similar story. We talked a little mm-hmm. bit about this on her podcast, but we both were exposed to pornography at a very young age yeah. and it wrecked us like lust and pornography and addictions. It, mm-hmm. it wrecked us. It stole parts of our story in our lives that God never intended for it to steal. Mm-hmm. And the enemy, you know, you give the enemy an inch and he takes a mile and he's like, great, I got her. She's in yep. like, you know, I exposed her once. I'm going to keep, you know, trying to call her back and feed this sin. And so I guess like if someone's listening today, mm-hmm. What I guess would you say is the number one thing that you'd recommend them to do when they're like, that's me. Like I am where you were. I'm addicted. I'm enslaved. I don't know what to do. I'm in secrecy. I'm in shame. Mm -hmm. What's that first step that they can do? I think the first practical thing, aside from like actually recognizing, wait, this is like a problem and I need help. I need freedom. I mean, it doesn't have to be like addiction, 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 like we kind of label addiction to be. It could literally just be like, I'm scrolling on TikTok 24 seven and I'm addicted to my phone. Or it could be like, I'm just buying packages 24 seven off of Amazon. Like it Mm -hmm. can be little things. It can be the big extreme sins and addictions, you know, like sin is sin. It doesn't discriminate. But if that's you today and you recognize that you need help, you need freedom, The first thing is to confess. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest thing to do, but it is the first thing that needs to happen. We need to confess it to the Lord and acknowledge God. Like I've done this thing. I've done it my way. I've tried to get free on my own. I also haven't tried to get free and I've Mm -hmm. fed this thing. I fed this habit. I fed this addiction. I fed this sin, but I need your help. And I recognize that only you can save me. He's our savior. Only you can bring the freedom in my life. I have to partner and submit to you. But I think another thing that's really necessary and again is scary is to find at least one person in your community that you can confess to. And this isn't meant to shame you. This isn't meant to heap judgment on you. And I think what keeps us quiet so often and and feeds us to keep it secret is because we're afraid of other people seeing us the way that we see ourselves. Like I'm, I'm worthless. I'm disgusting. I'm broken. I'm this. And we think, and the enemy's so good at convincing us this, that everyone sees us this way, or they will see us this way, or God sees us this way. When in actuality, if you are linked up with godly community who loves you, who, who understands the gospel and the compassion and the truth of Christ, They're supposed to meet you with love, with grace, building you up. Yes, maybe correcting you, but leading you towards the path of righteousness and doing life with you. The the enemy wants to isolate you, but God wants you to be in intimate relationship with him and with people. And that's vital and necessary. Bringing those things into the light is the, the first step to freedom. Oh, that was a bar. (laughs) You know, it's funny. I actually read in your book. Mm -hmm. I think you said this, that Satan's name actually means deceiver. Yeah. And I was reading and I was like, I actually never knew that for some odd reason that his name literally means deceiver, Mm -hmm. which is like, he is the father of lies. And I think that's such a good point that you brought. It's like, of course, no one wants to go and confess because you're so ashamed that they're going to say like, Ew. Like, I I couldn't believe you would do that. How would you do that? Like, you think that they're going to name call you the way that Satan name calls you and then causes you to believe that that's what your thoughts are. But it's not your thoughts. It's actually Satan's thoughts trying to tell you, I'm so disgusting. I did this again. No one's going to love me. Of course, this is why I'm still single or whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. all these lies coming from the deceiver whose whole role is to deceive. Mm -hmm. But I think you mentioned the word confession. And Mm -hmm. I I feel like that's a buzzword in Christianity. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong. Like God literally calls us to confess. But I think for perhaps maybe a new believer or someone that hasn't done that yet, Mm -hmm. you even talk about this in your book of like who to confess to and how to confess. Mm -hmm. Like who would you actually say to confess to? Because sometimes people don't know who to confess to. Mm -hmm. He's like, is it just my friend? Is it my parent? Is it my dog? Is it just me in the mirror? It's like, who do you actually confess to? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, we need to confess to the Lord. We need to acknowledge that whenever we sin, that word sin means to miss the mark. It's actually a a term from from archery. It's like you just slightly miss the mark like of perfection. None of us are perfect, which is funny because so many of us are trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole, we can get into that later if we want. But whenever we sin, we need to acknowledge God, I, I did not live up to perfection. 
Like I, I sinned against you. I, I made a mistake. I stepped outside of your order, your will and your way. And confession is just acknowledging that. It's acknowledging, hey, I did something wrong. Confession and repentance go hand in hand. Confession is I did something wrong. Repentance is now I'm going to turn my ways to follow you again. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my course and direction and start walking in your ways. So confession and repentance. But we also need to confess to other people. And not to the whole world. You don't have to get on Instagram yeah, don't alive. Don't get on TikTok. Yeah, you I feel like people do that. And I'm like, I don't know if the whole world is meant to see that. <laughs> I mean, maybe if God tells you to, to be yeah. transparent or vulnerable. But like, it's so important to be prayerful about your people. And that's not like an exclusive thing. But it's more so like, God, can you reveal to me who in my circle? I mean, it could be a friend. It could be an accountability partner. But I think even a mentor, a pastor, it could be a Christian counselor where you know there is that safety in that space where you can process it and there isn't any judgment. But for me, I know it was my sorority sister when it came to my sin because she was very vocal about this is something I struggled with, but I got freedom from. Mm -hmm. So I knew that she was a safe person to confess to because one, she knows the Lord. And she exemplified the characteristics of Christ. I knew she was, she, she knew the word of God. She was truthful, but she was also so graceful, like full of grace and compassion that I knew that I could go to her and be raw and real. And she would meet me with love and not judgment. Mm. She would meet me with truth too. Right. So someone like that, but also she had seen victory in this area and she was outspoken about it. So I knew that she could empathize with me in that mm -hmm. so I think that also made it easier for me to to open up to her because I wasn't opening up to everybody she was mm -hmm. the first person when I finally got to college my freshman year that I actually admitted hey this is something I've been struggling with since I was exposed to it when I was four years old now not everyone's going to relate to what you might be struggling with but if someone knows the gospel if someone has seen victory in their life they might be a good person to start that conversation with Mm, agreed. Yeah, I think it's super important to go to people that are where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So if someone is living a very free, victorious lifestyle and they have the fruit of the spirit and you know mm -hmm. they're just walking in full freedom, like confess to that person. I think what is the problem is sometimes we're confessing to people who are affirming our sin still. Yeah. And that could be the issue, I think, is like, you're like, hey, you know, my boyfriend and I slept together. And then they're like, okay, and? <laughs> like, what's the they're big like, deal? Okay. Yeah, God like, will well, forgive you. Totally. Like, God will yes, forgive you. But or like, well, my boyfriend and I did too. So like, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think we want to emphasize like being careful who you confess to because you want someone, like you said, truth and love mm -hmm. that speaks the truth and says, okay, you know what? I love you, but God has more for you and that's not God's best for you. And so like, let's link arms and do this together yeah. because I think, yeah, who you confess to is super, super important. Like you don't want someone that's going to agree with the sin, affirm the sin, be mm -hmm. like, it's not that big of a deal when to God, it is a big deal because he has more for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think also like how, how to confess, because mm -hmm. I think sometimes people are like, what do I say? How do I do this? Like going into it, I think the buildup up is the scariest thing. That's so true. You you make this whole thing in your mind. You're like, okay, what do I say? I'm going to say like this. I'm going to do like this. Like, how do you actually confess? Oh my gosh. That reminds me of the prodigal son so much. Y'all need to go read. I think it's such a Luke. good, but book. literally it's like, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go back home to my father and I'm going to, I'm going to tell him that I'm sorry. And I'm going to, um, and then I'm going to say, you know, I don't have to be your son anymore. I can be a servant. Like I, I can just serve you. If I can like come back into your house again, it's <laughs> like so many of us can just like hype up the moment wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I have to do all these things and say all these right things. And then God will be like, okay, you can come back. When in reality, it's just God, like, I'm sorry. I think confession is just saying, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge this was wrong. Please, will you forgive me? And God, will you help me? We can't just say, God, I'm sorry. And then there not be anything to that. Like there needs to be a recognition of, but I need your help out of this thing. I don't mm. want to do this thing again. Like truly, if you don't want to do this thing again, you can call upon the name of the Lord. Like you can call upon God and say, God, 
I invite you in. I invite you in to help me, to heal me, to maybe even reveal things to me that I'm not seeing clearly here that that's causing me to fall into temptation, that's leading me into sin. God, would you just give me eyes to see and would you help me to have a willingness to mm. obey? Like the thing I love about God is that we can be so straight up with him. Yeah. Like, yes, he is God and there is a reverence there and a respect there. But also he knows us, like he knows our heart, he knows our vernacular, he knows everything about us. So it's like we can approach him unfiltered in a sense and be raw and real because I think it's then and there that he can say, now I can work. Mm -hmm. Now I can actually get to work because you're being vulnerable and you're being real and you're letting me see you fully and now I can fully start to work in your life. So mm -hmm. literally just be honest and say, God, this is where I messed up. I need help here. Even in my flesh, I don't want to be free, but I do want to be free in my spirit. It's like, just be honest with God and he will help you in that freedom journey and to even develop desires for freedom mm -hmm. instead of living in sin, living in foolishness. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So y'all, this year has gone by so fast. What is something that you are proud of in 2024 so far? For me, it was my book. And now maybe what is something that you still want to accomplish? So life does go by so fast and it is important to take a moment to celebrate your wins and then also look forward and then make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can absolutely help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next six months. So I personally benefited so much from therapy, whether I was in premarital, I went by myself. It is truly what helped me find freedom by meeting a Christian therapist. But I just think in general, if you're ever struggling, you're needing someone to help you with coping skills or set boundaries or really just help you overcome any trauma in your life, therapy can be very beneficial. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and then switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is so amazing. So take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash happy healthy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash happy healthy. I do wonder sometimes, you know, when it comes to overcoming addiction, if we need to be fully, fully surrendered, like if we need to get mm. to like the end of ourselves and be like, okay, God, I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Because I also know people that are like, look, I am forever going to struggle with this sin, mm -hmm. but I'm going to choose to surrender. I think it can be a two-part answer. Yeah. But I do think like, specifically in my story, I was sick of it. I was ready yep. to be done with the addiction. I was so like, God, I am over feeling like there is a 50 pound weight on my shoulder, just mm -hmm. like dragging me around. And so I think God can use both of them. But I do think that God will work in someone that has a surrendered heart totally. and that's willing to be like, I need you. Like I'm not depending on myself to find freedom anymore. I'm depending on you. Mm -hmm. Do you, what would you say also to that? I would say 100%. Literally, I agree because he understands that. I think that aspect of surrender is such a huge part of it because it's recognizing that in and of myself, I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. I cannot do it alone. And so many of us are trying to do it out of our own strength. We're trying to do it out of our own willpower. And that's why we keep falling into sin. Mm -hmm. Like so many of us are going about it with our best effort, with, with our best intention. But the reason why that hasn't worked is because it's a spiritual battle at the end of the day. Like we need the armor of God. We need God going before us, doing the warring, doing the winning, giving us the victory. It talks about this in, in Deuteronomy when the Israelites are told to go into battle. And, and um, it talks about how like when you go to war, because it's going to happen, like we're going to go into battle. God's the one that's going to go before you. you don't have to fear mm -hmm. and I love that like we don't have to have it all together we don't have to be the best soldier on the front lines and and never expect to fall or to fail ever again but it's that willingness that mm -hmm. surrender of saying God I literally can only bring five percent but you are you bring more than 95 mm percent -hmm. God you are God you are literally God you are going to supply my every need and help and help me to either get through this battle or if I'm not meant to face this, to provide a means of escape. And you have to be linked with the Lord. You have to be yielded to him, abiding in him and, and surrender to him so that you can know when to step, where to go, what to do, what not to do, all those things. But it comes in partnership and surrender to God. Yeah. Amen. I think um, what I think some people may need to hear is they think that 
you know, why would God give me these desires? Mm. Or, you know, why, why do I feel this way? Or why am I so struggling with it? If, if God could take it, then why wouldn't he take it? It does create a deeper dependency on the Lord. It creates more faith. It creates trust in him. It creates absolute, you know, looking at him to be your sustainer because you just mentioned the verse. He won't tempt you beyond what you can handle. That. Um, you know, the whole cliche thing, like God gives his battles to the toughest soldier. So I'm like <laughs> me, me doing the dishes. I'm like, wow, God, this is so, <laughs> He's but like, I was like, fine. I don't think that verse is biblical. I don't know. So just knowing that like, God is not the one who is tempting you. Yeah. God is not the one that's dangling it in front of your face. God is always going to give you a way out. Tem yeah. Satan is the one that wants to tempt you. If you read like Luke four, like mm -hmm. I did a whole podcast on this. And so remembering that the battle is not against God. The battle is against Satan, who is again, the deceiver. You go back to his name, the father of lies. Like when there is a lie or this addiction or this thing coming back, you remember, okay, there's two people. There's one that loves me and there's one that hates me. Who am I going to chase? Who am I going to follow? Facts. God loves me. God wants the best for me. God wants to find freedom for me. But Satan hates me, wants to steal, kill, and destroy and tempt me. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that you have the name of Jesus, the most powerful name above all names, to find freedom. And so I just want to remind you guys that because I think people can look at God and be like, why would God give this to me? And it's like, we are born into a sinful world. Yep. And the more you feed these desires, the more they're going to grow. It's so true. And so starve those desires, starve the thing. Don't give it more access. Don't give it more power. Remove access from your atmosphere if it's tempting you more if it mm -hmm. might be you know certain foods or binge eating or pornography or masturbation or whatever like the things that might be triggering you remove access if possible and I think bringing people into that is how you're going to stay free yeah what do you feel like is God's heart towards sin and addiction because you know, I'm reading your book and you um, were talking about how you just felt like God was so ashamed of you or God turned away from you when in reality, I think God actually turns towards us. But yeah. what do you think God's heart posture is in addiction and sin and all these things towards us? Oh my gosh. The, the fact of the matter is, is that God despises sin. He doesn't despise us. He despises sin knowing that it separates us, knowing that the enemy uses that he, the enemy wants to get us outside of the order of God, the will of God, the ways of God in order to, like you said, steal, kill and destroy us. John 10, 10. But Jesus has come to give us life mm -hmm. and life abundantly. Like that is his will. He wants to give us life and life abundantly, even though there's struggle, even though there's strife in the world, that we have eternal life with him and that we will be OK. We will we will make our way through the battle and the storm. I think about in my own life with my parents, both of my parents were addicts. My dad uh, was an alcoholic and he passed away from his alcoholism when I was 10 years old. And my mom, <laughs> talking about earlier about how this was a really tough year, um, my mom died last year in May and uh, there was a whole bunch of complications that led up to that. But she also struggled with alcoholism my whole life. So I had mm. two parents that were addicts and I had to live with that and grow up in that and mature in that it was hard but when I got saved when I was 14 years old I think God just like downloaded in me so much compassion for my mom that mm. I think can only be equated to the heart of God like I didn't look upon my mom with with shame and with disgust and, and scorning her it was the sin that was destroying her that that made me have this righteous mm. anger like I wanted to so far remove her from this situation that I saw every single day, stealing from her, taking away from her, destroying her, literally killing her <laughs> where she's at now, sadly. She's with the Lord, praise mm. God. She's fully free in the arms of Jesus. And she, she came to know the Lord throughout her life, throughout my life. I just, I know that it breaks God's heart seeing mm -hmm. us suffer and seeing us give into sin seeing us give into this empty promise time and time again and it never leads to anywhere good mm -mm. like i think back in my life for those of y'all who are watching or who are listening i know there's probably something that you have gone through that you feel shame towards or you're going through right now that you're like oh my gosh i feel condemned because of this thing no friend you have conviction because this thing isn't serving you it's actually stealing from you it like mm. sin never serves us it always steals it always takes away it always enslaves and god hates that mm -hmm. and if i know anything about god he wants to bring freedom to the captives he wants satan any oppressor to let his people go so that we can live in freedom and in relationship with him and step into the promised places that he's prepared for us because mm -hmm. he wants nothing but
but good for us. Again, the world that we presently live in, there's sickness, there's death, there's darkness, there's evil. We're gonna go through suffering. It's inevitable. But we don't have to fall victim to the attacks of the enemy every single time. We have God on our side. And I just, I know it's this holy, righteous frustration that he has towards sin because he so greatly loves and desires freedom and relationship with his people. Mm, Wow. Hello. (laughs) You see why I brought her on (laughs) y'all? I think that's so important to know because again, remembering, like I was saying earlier, one loves you and one hates you, but also remembering that like sin does separate us from God. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that next because I remember you saying that God felt so quiet to you and you were wondering like, why can't I hear God? But it's also because sin does separate us from God Mm -hmm. and it isn't God's best for us because he loves us so much and he sees it make us sick. He sees it, make us hate ourselves more. And then also we start to place this sin as our identity, which it's not our identity. It's just something that we might struggle with. That's what the enemy wants you to think is, oh, I am a porn addict. I am addicted. I, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And God's like, that's not who you are. You are first and foremost, a child of God or a daughter of the King, or you are, you know, all the things that God tells us that we are in the Bible. And so I think that's, what's really hard is we think I am this addict. This is who I am. You're like, how could God ever love me if this is who I am? And God's like, okay, I made you who you are. Like I never place those labels on you and you read the word of God, you know who he says you are. And so Mm -hmm. it is just something to note that maybe you are feeling distant from God or you're like, why can't I hear God? Or why isn't he speaking to you? I would just audit the things in your life and say, okay, like, is there something in me, like sin that I'm unwilling to let go of or an unrepented sin or sin that I am like, just not ready to be done with, which I remember talking about this in my book where there's multiple reasons I think why people don't want to confess sin or they don't want to let it go because maybe you're not done with the sin yet. You're like, oh, I'm not in the season yet. Or this is still kind of fun. It's still comfortable. I'm still enjoying it. And I'm just like, y'all, there is no better time than today Mm -hmm. to get right with God and to let go of that sin. Like, don't wait until you're sick and tired of it. It may cause you to be like that. It may take that time, but like do your future self a favor and address it now, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it is so painful, like rip the bandaid off And you can begin that healing journey like now. Mm -hmm. I even want to speak to that because you bring up that I wrote about how like, God, like, why can't I hear you? Like, are you still there? Have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm living in my sin. And it's like, I'm turning my back on God. He's never turned his face away from me. I'm turning my back on him with these decisions. And I reference again in Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 6, the Shema prayer, your little theology lesson for today. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Shema prayer was the first prayer that the Israelite people would learn like as children. And it begins by saying, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And it like continues on. And then Jesus references it. And he also adds mind, which I find is interesting. Mm. Your, your heart, soul, mind, and strength, like holistically. But anyways, um, the interesting part of the Shema prayer, why is it called Shema? Because that first word here means Shema. It's Shema in the Hebrew. But it doesn't just mean to hear. It means to listen and obey. Mm. And I think it's so important because so many of us want to hear from God, but we don't want to Shema. We don't want to listen with the heart and with the intention mm-hmm. of walking out obedience. I'm not saying God is going to withhold his His voice from you and his presence from you. He wants that for you. Like he wants to be in relationship with you but do you honestly like let's take inventory do you honestly want to give a hundred percent to god Mm -hmm. like like janine was just saying we need to come to a place where it's like i really realize that the enemy is not on my side that this sin is actually stealing from me and and draining life out of me more than it's feeding anything into me and i need to get to a point where i'm going to say god whatever you want to do Whatever you want me to cut off, whatever you want me to surrender, whatever you want me to let go of, whatever you want me to pick up and start walking in or whatever, I'm going to do it. When you start praying with that heart intention, mm-hmm. friend, God's going to be like, oh, la, 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 la. yeah, he's <laughs> like, 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 okay. <laughs> he's like, oh, now you want to listen? But it's not out of like, you know, oh, so now you want to listen? Right. It's not with that intention, but it's like, 
thank God, like I, I've been waiting to talk mm-hmm. for, to you because this is what I have in store for you. And I say this all the time that if we truly had our best interest in mind, mm-hmm. we would just do what God says. We would just do it his way because 100% of the time, it always works out when we do it God's way. So just like know that if you're not hearing God clearly, are you just living in sin and, and refusing to obey everything he's asking you to do? Know that whatever he calls you to do, it's for your benefit, for your good, and for his glory. Amen. What you're talking about reminds me of Matthew 13. I was sorry, I was just looking it up because it was popping up in my head. You know, it's about the um, parable of the sower Mm -hmm. and how some heard the word of God and it fell on a rocky place. Some seeds fell on a thorn and then others fell on good soil. And I think... You know, also when you read Psalms 139, where it's like, Lord, search my heart and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead Mm. me to the path of righteousness. That really should be the prayer. Like, it sounds like that's what you were saying is like, God, search my heart and see what sin is in me. What is offensive towards you? What is not leading me towards holiness? Like, I will be straight up. I was in the shower yesterday and I was just listening full on rap. (laughs) And it was like... F this, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, oh my gosh. And I literally got so convicted in the shower yeah. where I was like, I have no business listening to this music. What, like, this is not creating a good, healthy breeding ground for God to speak to me. It's not creating good soil. And it really convicted me. And it reminds me of just this good soil, which the good soil is people that not only hear the word, they are ready to implant the word and then apply the word. And those are the people that God can use in transform because you're ready ready to hear it, take Mm -hmm. it and obey. And I love, I actually wrote that down on here where I wanted to talk about freedom Mm -hmm. comes from loving God first, because I think we have it backwards where we just think, obey me, obey God, obey, 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 obey. And that's like legalism and religiosity where a lot of people just are like, oh, this is so hard. It's just rules. To obey God. like, It is hard to obey God if you're just doing it just because you got to obey God. It comes from, and I, I did a whole like sermon on this, where it comes from adoration of the Lord versus mm-hmm. obligation. And adoration is getting this reverence of God. You are so good. You're so worth following. And now I want to obey you because I see how good you are. And out of that love, mm-hmm. it flows into this obedience, not the other way around. It's really, really, really hard to obey God if you don't love him. 100%. You can't even do it, I feel like. Well, no, and it, it says in uh, John 14, 15, if you love me keep my commands Mm -hmm. it's not keep my commands and then I'll love you it's like if you love me because there's so many people and this is my little soapbox where it's just like in the media this this whole like well only God can judge me Jesus loves Mm -hmm. me it's like but do you love him Mm -hmm. like literally what are your actions communicating who is your God like what idol are you serving like is it yourself is it the industry is it the world is it satan literally i don't know it, like that's kind of like that righteous anger of me mm-hmm. like well you should know better and do better but then yeah. i look at myself and i'm like oh my gosh god like i <laughs> i need to love you with everything like let me take out the splinter in my eye or the peg or whatever but yeah it, it, it's all about love i'm so glad that you brought that up because i talk about that kind of closer towards the end of the book so everything that you said i kind of write about that <laughs> but again she's gonna go like way more in depth into this topic in her book because again maybe you are in a situation and you're just like why can i not find freedom why am i so stuck in this definitely check it out and like i just back you up i literally was an endorser for her book because yes. i was like i know what you say is factual and it's scriptural and you found freedom in your life and again like guys you don't want to take advice from just anybody like no. that's the problem i think a little bit in today's day and age is that everyone has a mouthpiece everyone has a platform everyone has a podcast and yes. it's great i started one too i'm right there with you but i want you guys to know that like like people that I've seen do this behind the scenes are the people that I can back up where I yep. know you find freedom. You're in the word of God. You're seeking him. You're pursuing him and you can back up what you're saying with scripture. Mm-hmm. And I think that is like super, super important. And so just know that I can back Kirby up here. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> so I think something else that can be hard is what you were talking about earlier is the performative piece. Oof. We're trying to find freedom. We're not finding it because we're putting all the power into ourselves. Talk about the performance piece in this a little bit more in your story because you did talk a lot about that uh, in your book. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm a people pleaser by nature. Like still to this day. Same. Still <laughs> to this day. I was literally crying. I was going to say crying in the club. I don't go to the club. <laughs> I was crying in church. No, literally crying on the floor of my bedroom last week. And I was like, God, like, why don't people like me? Like, it's just something that I still am working through to this day if I'm being completely transparent. But yeah, this performative thing it's just been it's just been ingrained in me since I was little. And I'm still kind of figuring out why, like what that is. Like I'm in counseling just trying to get freedom from that present day. Like why why is this something that I'm struggling with? I'm working out with the Lord, working out with a Christian counselor. So shout out Hello. to Christian counseling. But when it comes to the performative aspect of it, I have a section in the book where I kind of break down how so many of us are trying to live as superhuman and I have this I have a a physical picture in my book somewhere uh where it's like on the top my counselor drew this for me where it says superhuman on the top and on the bottom it says subhuman and he's like at the time he was like Kirby you're trying to be superhuman I was like no I'm not like Mm. I know I'm not perfect he's like okay but you keep using these words of like well I don't feel like I'm enough I'm enough I'm enough what Mm. what is enough perfection you're never going to arrive there. (laughs) So it's like, Mm. I was trying to be perfect for God, for, for everyone around me. And honestly, for myself, it was, it was a pride thing at the end of the day when I really peeled back the layers. Mm. It's like, no, it's not. I'm not prideful. It's like, "Mm, let's really look at the root here. (laughs) Let's really look at the root. Let's be honest. And so it's like, I was trying to be perfect. I was trying to have it all together, but because I'm human, all of us are like, it's inevitable that we are going to stumble and fall and fail in some way, small or large, I would just fall. Like when I fell, I fell. And it was like, I would fall to this subhuman way of viewing myself where it's like, I'm worthless. Nobody loves me. God hates me. I'm a disappointment. I'm yada, yada, yada. Sound familiar? Anybody out there? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, I just, if I just try harder, if I just do better, and then you just work your way back up to this superhuman expectation. It's like this cycle. And it's like, well, how do you break that cycle? And I I write a a lot about this of just like understanding our humanity. That's a huge thing that we need to understand is what does it mean to be human? That's what we are. That's where we belong. Not superhuman because that's only Jesus. Not subhuman because we have value. We're simply human. Like boom, right there Mm. in the middle. We are simply human. And I think understanding that Jesus is the superhuman like he did it all on the cross like he accomplished it all and knowing that we get to inherit his victory and share in that the more that that sinks in it removes that like perfectionistic that performative nature within us and it moves us out of shame of like wow god did this and i can't no it shouldn't lead us to shame it should lead us to gratitude of like Mm -hmm. my god did this and i get to i get to be a part of this Thank you, Lord. Like it it humbles us to realize that it's only Jesus. It can only ever be Jesus. It's never going to be in us, but that doesn't devalue us. Like our value is in Christ and that should produce gratitude. Okay. I love what you said there about define like what enough is, because I think a lot of us, I mean, that is like, I would say my number one struggle. I remember back in 2020, I was just sitting like same thing in my house, like loathing and crying and almost about to quit social media. And I remember journaling, like, I don't feel enough. And it's like, but what does that even mean? Literally. Like, what is your standard of enough? Is enough like more followers? Is it more this? Is it more that? Like, what is enough? And I think, what did you say? You said none of us will be perfect because enough would be perfect. Yes. And that's not attainable. There's like, there's no ceiling on (laughs) enough. It's like you truly cannot measure what enough is because once you finally get that, you're going to start comparing yourself to everybody else around you or you're going to start, like it could be anything, right? And it's like, well, if I had this, then I would be enough. If if I had this, then then this would be enough. It's like enough with enough. (laughs) Period. (laughs) I think that's a really good reminder because the standard is always changing. It's always moving. It's always more, 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 more. And I think like be okay with where you are right now and that being enough because Mm -hmm. yes, you can, you can find contentment and joy right where you are. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're always chasing the next thing, like we're never going to be satisfied and happy and content with what we have right now. So that was just, that just (laughs) unlocked something for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, not only that, it's just like also... There, it's not like we have to quote unquote be enough for for Jesus yeah. either. Like in the sense that He will withhold His presence from us. It's like you don't have to perform for God to love you. You don't have to perform to be blessed in this way. If that's what you're doing, what's your intention? Honestly, there's a heart check that needs to happen there. But like when we peel back the layers, and it's like, why am I doing these things? 
oh, it's because I want love. Oh, it's because I want validation. Oh, it's because this. Then we can actually go to God with that and he will meet that need. Mm -hmm. Like like I was saying the other day when I was crying on my floor and I was like, God, like everything I was crying about. (laughs) He just like brought it to mind. I was like, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear, like, what do you have to say about this God? Like I've been talking, I've been praying for 30 (laughs) minutes, like just venting to you. And all I could hear was Matthew 6. And I was like, okay, fine. And I flip open to it. And like the very first bit of it is talking about like, I was, I was kind of just like wrestling with the, with the sense of like, there's all these people that are getting attention and like, kind of like you were, what you were saying, it's like, they all have these platforms and it's like, and I've been faithful for all these years. Mm. Like, what the heck? And the first verse is like, don't do all these things. So people see you. Mm. And I was like, <gasps> I was, like, like, oh. I was like, okay, God, I'll be conviction. Quiet. No, literally, I'm like, I'm going to be so quiet, God. I'm so sorry. I'll never talk again. And then I got to the very end of it, and it talks about seek first the kingdom and all will be added. Mm-hmm. And he just like, even reading that, he's like, if you just put me first, all these needs that you're presenting before me, I'm going to take care of them. And I think it even, it even goes with just like the topic of freedom. It's like when you seek God first, he is going to supply your every need. The thing that yep. you're surrendering, that you're so petrified of giving up to him, he's going to meet that need. He's actually going to meet the need. Like that thing that you're surrendering, it never did. It was never enough, was mm-hmm. it, right? That's why we need to surrender it. Like he is enough. He will meet every need. And when you seek him first and you walk in his will and in his ways and you start walking out the freedom journey and I detail it like I I talk about it in the form of like a battle plan once you start walking these steps of the battle plan out you're going to realize wait life with God and living with God and living in freedom is far better than this thing that I was so attached Mm. to that either one I didn't want to give up or two I didn't believe I could give up gosh that's so real in the sense of in the present moment when you're like going through it a you never think you can get over it you're like i there's no way i'll get out of this like i'm too far gone or whatever b you think it is everything like you think like this is so amazing and then when you get to the other side of freedom like where i feel like i mean i obviously still sin in many different ways but when i overcame like my actual like habitual addictions and sins it was like now i'm so repulsed by it where i'm like why did i ever think that that was where I would find joy in life and fun. The closer I think that you get to God, the further away you get from sin, the more that you love God, the more you hate sin. And so you'll start to realize like that is not appetizing anymore. Like as I was saying earlier, when you start to starve those addictions, Mm -hmm. starve the things, um, you don't get, you don't have an appetite for them anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you'll start to be like, ew, why did I even want that to begin with? Like, why did I think that that guy was even cute? Why did I even think that guy would make me happy? You name it what it is for you. So I really do think again, it comes from that funnel of loving God, encountering God, knowing God. Mm -hmm. Like it starts with God. It doesn't start with me first. It doesn't start with we first. It doesn't start with I. It starts with looking at Christ Mm -hmm. and allowing him to be where everything flows out of it. But first seek the kingdom and his righteousness Mm -hmm. and everything else will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Like y'all write that verse down, Matthew 6, 33. It is a powerful verse. When you start to think that all these things will bring life, all these other things, it's like, no, you first seek him and God will give you every single thing you need. Not necessarily what you want, what you need. God knows what you need. And the things that you want sometimes aren't even good for you and trusting that he knows what you need before you do. Okay, before I close out, the last thing actually you reminded me of, Mm -hmm. and I hope it's okay to ask this, but, and I do want to be tender to this subject but mm-hmm. obviously you mentioned your parents passed mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. addiction can you speak into like even generational addictions mm-hmm. and habitual sins because i think that's also a big part of the story is that a lot of times the enemy works in generational curses yeah. did you feel like that was a pattern at all in your life and where do you think that played into your story oh my gosh i think that god swooped me up right in the in the moment at the time that he needed to i don't think i ever would have continued in like their addictions with like alcohol and stuff just because i was so traumatized by it mm. and I, I think for some people they can be affected by that trauma and unfortunately the victims become victimizers like whether it's through drinking or what, whatever the substance abuse is and it's like well that'll never be me that'll never be me like whether it's just rebellious or whether it's just stubbornness literally it's like either i'm like I, that'll, that'll never be me this like selfish stubborn or pride yeah pride yeah. or just like this rebellious nature of like well i'm gonna go do it anyways or whatever 
But I think with me, I was <laughs> like, seriously, I was just so traumatized. I was like, I'm not doing wow. this. Like, I cannot do this to myself. I can't do this to my family knowing what it's done. And uh, again, there's so many layers to that because as a, when I was little, it was like, oh, it's my responsibility to take care of them. Like, I have to be the parent now. Like, that's just immediately what I took on as a very young child, which should have never happened but working through that right now and unpacking that right now if there is addiction in your family if there is cycles of habitual sin that go on for generations again what we have continued to say is that it's not in your strength it's in God's strength that you can be free that you can not only break the generational curses like off of you but like for your whole legacy, for your whole family. I I refused, like I refused to compromise in that way. I've never had a sip of alcohol in my life, except when I was Catholic and I ha- well, I was forced to drink <laughs> my my church wine. And I was like, can I go first? Because I'm not drinking after anybody else. That's disgusting. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Christian now, but like that was my one and only time. Like I'm a grape juice girl, all right? Uh, <laughs> for real. But it was like, that is my line in the sand. Even when I turned 21 and it was like, well, do I want to just like have a little taste? Like there's nothing inherently evil about alcohol as a substance, but it can be abused and it can lead to to not being sober minded and making these decisions and knowing mm. my family. It was like, there were too many things that I was like, I'm just not even going to do it. I'm going to draw my line in the sand. It is, I'm not even going to compromise. I'm not even going to entertain. And that's just a mindset that we have to grow and, and exercise and adopt when it comes to any sin, whether it's stuff that you have been engaged in or stuff that you haven't been engaged in. It's like, I, I have a whole thing and you'll get to it as you continue to read Janine, where it's, it's, we need to define our, our red light zones and our green light zones. It's like, what is permissible? What are my green light zones? And what is just absolutely going to live in the red light zone forever? Like I, like it is just, it is in its own category and I, I'm never going to pick that thing up. I'm never going to touch that thing. Mm. And it's like alcohol was in my red light zone. I'm never going to pick that thing up. Pornography used to be in my green light zone, more like my yellow light zone, to be honest, where it was like, well, just like every now and again, I'll like go here and like mm-hmm. test the waters. But like now it's like perpetually in my red light zone. I'm like, there is just, there's no compromise. I like the second that there is a compromising thought, it's like, nope. I recognize that's the voice of the enemy. What What is his native language? Lies. I'm mm-hmm. not even going to entertain that. I'm done. And I detail more about what that looked like practically, like all my tactics with getting free and, and resisting temptation. But generationally, it was like, this is just, I'm not going to compromise. It's mm. a no, period. I like that whole idea of the red light and green light. That's really good. I think that makes sense. It's like just boundaries with yourself exactly. of knowing what you should and shouldn't do. Um, okay, before we close out, there was one quote I wanted to read and you were just talking about Satan's native language, which is yes. lies. Liar. And um, this is what you wrote in your book. And I wanted to read this because I think it's really important for you guys to know. So he feeds you what you want, then flips the script on you. That leads to isolation, the enemy's next best weapon after accusation. If he can get you alone, make you feel completely abandoned, or get you to push everyone else away, he will be the loudest voice and most abrasive influence in your ear. Yep. Wow. (laughs) It's true. It is so true. He always tries to get you to isolate yourself because then he can just only just chirp. There's no other voices, no other opinions. Right. He's a yapper. He's a yapper. And isolation, I've been saying this on recently, is like isolation is just an, an imitation of intimacy. Like, because with isolation, oh. you re- you retreat and you're like away from other people. But in the same way with intimacy, you're retreating, but you're retreating with your people. And there's depth and connection there. Whereas isolation is no man's land. There's nobody there for you, mm-hmm. literally. Yeah, I remember talking about this in my book where it was godly solitude versus worldly isolation and one mm-hmm. pushes you towards Christ and one pulls you away where there is seasons where you, not even seasons, daily where you need to be alone with God and spending mm-hmm. time with him. That's that godly solitude where you're, like Jesus said, he went away, yeah. he prayed, he got refueled, he went back out and served and loved people. But Satan just tries to get you to isolate. Nothing good comes from that. So yeah. I think knowing the difference between those is very very important Mm -hmm. okay this has been an amazing conversation yes kirby thank you for coming on y'all here is her book again definitely check it out you guys if this is something that maybe even you know someone in your life is struggling with this maybe they've opened up to you they're struggling with something in their life they've confessed to you Mm -hmm. um get this for a friend it is now out and available 
And congrats to you, a new Thank author. You. It's so fun being an author. I can't believe it. Another thing I even want to suggest that, like we stressed so much at the beginning of the podcast about community. Like if you, not me saying about, literally my husband. Okay, my husband, Canadian, no, rubbing off on you. My husband's Canadian. I've been catching myself. I'm like, what, <laughs> what is going on? But if you have community and like you and your community are open and vulnerable about walking through these things and you want to get freedom together. I know like I, at my local gym, some of the women at one of, one of the classes I take, we might do like a, a book club where we, where we might go through this every week, which I'm like, this is my book. That's crazy. Aww. So it's like, even if you want to just like have community to like really process these things together and put these things into application together and see accountability that's another thing that I encourage you to do like get your girls together it's summertime like start those book clubs Mm -hmm. I'm just really hoping that this will impact the individual and everybody honestly not not for my own sake but truly because people need freedom yeah and that really I think is both of our hearts with anything that we do yeah it is not like hey just buy our books because like we want more money it's like genuinely because we want you to know God more we want you to find solutions you've been looking for we don't want you going to the world or TikTok to find these solutions when we've experienced them we found freedom when we know that God's word and ways work and so take it from us we both have found freedom from something pretty crazy in our life and we will continue to and so um thank you for coming on this was such a joy i will have all of her links down below in the show notes in the youtube description go support her and kirby would you bless us with a prayer i would love to lord i just want to thank you that we get to gather here today that we get to talk about freedom that we get to remember and reflect on the freedom that you have brought janine and i in this specific way I'm just praying for anyone who is listening today, God, that if they feel discouraged, even as we have been talking and building them up and encouraging them, if they still feel the voice of the enemy tearing them down and telling them, but this isn't for you, this this is available for them, but not for you. God, I just pray that you would silence the voice of the enemy. Lord, that you would put a desire within each and every single person listening, that you would put a desire within them to read your word, to become familiar with your words, your language, the truth, God, that you would bring free them to their lives, that you would reveal to them the areas that are not serving them, but are stealing from them and and taking away from them, and that they would willingly submit those things to you and surrender those things to you so that they can start taking the necessary steps in their freedom journey. Lord, would you surround them with community? Would you surround them with your presence and remind them that they are not alone, that you go before them, that you champion them, that you have already won the victory. We are fighting for victory and for freedom from a place of victory, from a place of freedom because of everything that you accomplished on the cross. I pray that you would remind them of this truth, that they would be saturated in this truth, that they would be so confident in this truth and that they would begin to take the necessary steps one day at a time whatever you are asking of them to give up to you and that they would experience the results of freedom and fullness in their life today, Lord. Would you just hold on to them and keep them in your hand and and keep them for the long haul. And, And even if we don't get instant results, that we would trust your process and your timing in freeing us because it will happen eventually lord as we press into you and trust into you so we we trust all the listeners into your hand in jesus name amen amen yay Yay. okay you guys i pray today's episode blessed you if it did give us a little tag repost it share it with a friend and if not that's okay too i just pray that you were blessed from this episode so thank you guys for listening thank you kirby and i'll see you guys next week for another episode of happy and healthy but until then Stay happy and healthy. Bye, Bye, guys. Okay, you guys, I hope today's episode blessed you. I know this is a pretty weighty, heavy topic. And so if you made it to the end, thank you for sticking around. I genuinely do pray that this has encouraged you to take the next right step, the next step of boldness and courage to seek God more, confess whatever you're going through and know that freedom is yours and it can happen. And that is God's intention and plan for you. And so I'm praying that today's episode helped you. If it did share it. And if not, that's okay too. leave a review. If this also blessed you as well. And Kirby is just an amazing writer and speaker. And so I pray that you will also check her out. I did a couple episodes with her on her podcast as well. So go check those out as well. And this is a big part of my story. And I'm here to testify that God can set you free. And it doesn't mean that you won't necessarily struggle. The temptations won't come back, but God will always give you a way out. He will always give you the tools to stay free 
and just know that the enemy does not want you to be free. So know that this battle is bigger than yourself, but it is possible with the Holy Spirit. So I love you guys, and I pray this episode bless you today. I will see you guys again next week for another episode of Happy and Healthy, but until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, guys. Bye.